Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund, and I'm a mechanical design engineer with a key interest in the fusion industry. Today is Wednesday, the 10th of July, 2024, and I'm here to give you your fusion news update this week. One, groundbreaking research at NSIRC and Lancaster University set to transform fusion reactor development. Two, multinational fusion energy project marks completion of its most complex magnet system. Three, ITER fusion reactor hit by massive decade long delay and 5 billion euro price hike. And make sure you stay till the end because as usual, I have plenty of interesting bonus stories that you might want to check out. One, groundbreaking research at NSIRC and Lancaster University set to transform fusion reactor development. Our first piece of news today comes from the Cambridge Network and is about a pioneering study at the National Structural Integrity Research Centre, NSIRC, and Lancaster University. This work, led by PhD student Ziyu Zhu and sponsored by TWI and Lloyd's Register Foundation, aims to revolutionise fusion reactor development. Tungsten, a crucial material for first wall applications due to its high melting point and low sputtering yield is the focus of an innovative new PhD project. The research explores manufacturing pure tungsten using wire-fed electron beam additive manufacturing, WFEB, and artificial intelligence for quality assurance, titled Investigation into Inline Process Monitoring for Improved Quality Assurance Using Artificial Intelligence in Wire-Fed Electron Beam Additive Manufacture. The project seeks to produce high density, low porosity tungsten components with superior mechanical properties. WFEB techniques offer significant advantages over traditional powder bed methods, such as maintaining higher purity, reducing oxidation risks, enhancing material utilization, and improving uniformity. The integration of AI for in-process monitoring aims to address challenges in tungsten fabrication ensuring reliable and efficient manufacturing processes. Collaborations between NSIRC, TWI Cambridge and Lancaster University are expected to yield groundbreaking results, potentially transforming fusion reactor development and advancing manufacturing processes. Two, multinational fusion energy project marks completion of its most complex magnet system. Our next story comes from phys.org about the recent milestone in ITER's construction. The ITER Fusion Energy Project, after two decades of international collaboration in design, production and assembly across three continents, celebrates the completion and delivery of its toroidal field coils from Japan and Europe. This milestone involves 19 massive D-shaped coils essential for ITER, an experimental fusion project aiming to replicate the sun's energy production process using magnetic confinement. ITER, involving over 30 countries, including the EU, China, India, Japan, Korea, Russia, and the US, relies on contributed components from participating nations. The toroidal field coils, constructed from niobium tin and niobium titanium, and cooled with liquid helium to become superconducting, will confine and control the plasma inside the ITER vacuum vessel. This superconductivity allows the coils to generate powerful magnetic fields crucial for confining and controlling the 150 million degree plasma within the tokamak. These coils, manufactured by companies like Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and ASG Superconductors, will generate an immense magnetic field, 250,000 times stronger than the Earth's. Each coil, measuring 17 meters tall and 9 meters across and weighing around 360 metric tons, was crafted from more than 87,000 kilometers of niobium tin wire. The intricate fabrication involved bending, heat treating and assembling these conductors into double pancakes, which were then stacked and insulated to form winding packs, inserted into robust stainless steel cases. The toroidal field coils assembly, involving over 40 companies, marks a significant achievement in ITER's progress towards demonstrating the viability of fusion energy. 3. ITER fusion reactor hit by massive decade-long delay and 5 billion euro price hike. Last up is another story related to the ITER project. However, this time it comes from Physics World. This news is unfortunately not as positive as story number 2 and covers the significant setback currently being faced 
which has resulted in a nearly decade-long delay and an additional 5 billion euros in costs. Initially conceived in 1985, ITER's first operation has been pushed to 2034, with the first experiments using deuterium tritium fuel now expected to be even later. This delay extends the timeline nearly 10 years beyond prior plans. Factors contributing to this setback include the COVID-19 pandemic, supply chain and quality control issues, and manufacturing problems like cracks in cooling water pipes. Additionally, the French Nuclear Safety Authority briefly halted assembly over radiological shielding concerns. ITER's new timeline involves starting with a deuterium-only plasma in 2034, reaching full plasma current in 2036 and beginning DT operations in 2039. The ITER Director General, Pietro Barabaschi, emphasises the need for more realistic construction schedules and additional testing. Despite the delay and cost increase, ITER remains a crucial project for fusion research. As stated by Sybil Gunter, Scientific Director of the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics, we are not aware of any project that will analyse the challenges as comprehensively as ITER in the foreseeable future. ITER has also already achieved groundbreaking engineering work up to this point, which will be important for all the fusion projects now underway and those still to come. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. First up, in a research article titled What Next? Further Implosion Space Exploration on the Path to NIF Extended Yield Capability. The authors have combined analytic theory with one-dimensional hydroscale simulations to extrapolate from the current best 2 to 4 megajoule outputs. Otto Landon, a key author on the paper, stated, Now that we've achieved ignition, the most pressing questions are if we can improve outputs by increasing compression and if fuel burn-up fraction is limited by ablator fuel mix, whether that can be mitigated by optimum choice of drive profile capsule ablator and dopant profile. The optimist to me says yes. Secondly, I have a bonus from Power Technology called Nuclear Fusion Challenges, Low Pressure, High Temperature and the Electromagnetic Field. For those of you new to the fusion industry or if you simply want to recap, you'll find this to be a really interesting read. It covers many of the issues faced by those developing technology in the fusion industry. For example, the high operating temperatures that materials must withstand and the damage caused by ionisation. Next up, I have two bonuses from the FIA. Last week, the 2024 supply chain report was released as an updated version from last year. This document covers a variety of topics such as key challenges or risks, projected growth and reported supply chain spend. The fusion industry is one that is always changing, so no matter your role or interest in fusion, it's definitely worth having a look through the report this year to find out a little more. The second bonus from the FIA relates to the strategic priorities that have been laid out by the fusion cluster. As the UK has just had a general election, leading up to it, the FIA and the fusion cluster wanted to emphasise the fusion sector's significance and issued key requests to incoming parliamentarians and ministers. They call for things such as sustained support for the STEP programme, UK AEA research activities and the advancement of other fusion technologies towards operational plants. They also urge continued efforts in skill development, stimulating private fusion investment and international cooperation to expedite fusion energy deployment. If you'd like to know more about the other areas that were highlighted, definitely make sure to check out the link below. And that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment or subscribe. If you'd like to know more about any of the stories or bonuses that were mentioned today, as always, the links will be in the description below. And you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.